Hello everyone, with me again Adi Kunyawan Yusuf and in this video we're gonna talk about T-Man. Now, I have a question for you. Do you love shopping? Hmm, maybe yes, maybe no. But based on your experience when you go shopping, will you purchase more goods when the price is low or when the price is high? Of course low, yes, that's normal. There will be more people who demand more when the price is low. That is the law of demand. Law of demand states that in satellite paribus condition, satellite paribus means other factors are assumed equal. When the price of a good rise, the quantity demanded of a good falls. One more time. Law of demand states that in satellite paribus condition, when the price of the goods rise, the quantity demanded of a good falls, and vice versa. I will use pizza illustration as an example to explain this material. This is the demand curve of pizza. What is demand curve? Demand curve tell us the quantity of a good that the buyer wish to buy or we call it as quantity demanded at each price. You can see here when the price is $2 per slice, the quantity demanded is 16,000 slices per day. But when the price is $4, the quantity demanded becomes only 8,000 slices per day. As the price increases, the quantity demanded decreases and vice versa. This makes the demand curve has negative slope. The next question is, why is the demand curve downward sloping? There are three main reasons. First is substitution effect. Second is income effect. And the third is law of diminishing marginal utility. First is substitution effect. Imagine. If the price of pizza is getting higher, will you still purchase pizza? Maybe yes, maybe no. Some of you will think to purchase other substitution that are more worth such as bread and also fried chicken. That is, as the price increases, buyers try to switch to substitutes that leads to the decrease of quantity demanded of pizza. Second is income effect. Imagine that your income is $32,000. So if the price of one slice of pizza is $2, you can purchase $32,000 divided by 2. It is 16,000 slices. But if the price is getting higher into $4 per slice, it means you can only purchase $32,000 divided by 4. It is only 8,000 slices. So, due to the increase of the price, our purchasing power will be lower. In the beginning, we can purchase 16,000 slices, but right now we can only purchase 8,000 slices because our income is still the same. And then, by having lower purchasing power, means the quantity demanded will decrease as the price increase. Third is law of diminishing marginal utility. Assume that right now you really want to eat pizza, then I offer you a pizza. I believe that you will purchase it because you really want to eat pizza. But as you eat one slice of pizza, then two slices of pizza, three slices of pizza, and so on, your additional satisfaction level will decrease, decrease, and decrease. When you eat second slice of pizza, you will have less additional satisfaction than the first slice of pizza, right? When you eat third slice of pizza, you will have less additional satisfaction than the second slice of pizza until you stop to eat because there will be no additional satisfaction anymore. This is the law of diminishing marginal utility. This law states that additional or marginal utility gain from an increase in consumption decrease which is subsequent increase in the level of consumption. One more time, law of diminishing marginal utility states that additional utility gain from an increase in consumption 
decrease with each subsequent increase in level of consumption. When you have less additional satisfaction, you are not willing to pay in high price like in the beginning, right? Or we can say that buyer reservation price will decrease. Buyer reservation price is the highest money amount that the buyers would be willing to pay for the goods. That's why to reach more demand, the price should be set lower. Wow, it's getting warmer now! By the way, in our real life, the demand curve not only straight like this, but it could be steeper or less steeper, bowed or bowed out. It depends on the unique taste and preferences of the household and other factors. Now, there are two terms that you need to distinguish. Change in quantity demanded and change in demand. One more time, change in quantity demanded and change in demand. Those two terms look similar but different. Change in quantity demanded means movement along the demand curve in response to a change in price. As the price increase, the quantity demanded, not demand ya, will decrease. While a change in demand is a shift of the entire demand curve, it affects the entire demand curve. If the demand increase, it will shift the demand curve to the right. But if the demand decrease, it will shift the demand curve to the left. Now, look at this graph. There are three points, A, B, and C. Movement along A to B is changes in quantity demanded along the graph due to the price. But movement between A and also C is a change in demand. Price doesn't change, but the demand changes. So, factors that change quantity demanded is price. And then, what are the factors that cause change or shift in demand? First is complements. Complements are goods that go together, for example, socks and shoes. When the demand of shoes increase, how will the demand of socks? Of course, it will increase. Demand curve of socks will shift to the right. Second, substitutes. Substitutes are goods that can serve as replacement for one another, such as rice and potatoes. How if the price of rice increase? Of course, the quantity demanded of rice will decrease. It will make the demand of potato increase and will shift the demand curve of potato to the right. Third, change in income. If you have more income, will you purchase more flip-flops or shoes? Of course, shoes. It means when the income rise, the demand of flip-flop will decrease. So flip-flop is categorized as inferior goods. What is inferior goods? Inferior goods is good for which demand tend to fall when the income rise. The opposite is normal goods. Goods for which the demand goes up when the income is higher and vice versa. Fourth, taste and preferences. For example, right now people prefer to purchase streetwear. It becomes a trend. The demand of this streetwear will increase so the price is the same. It could shift the demand curve of streetwear to the right. 5. Population of potential buyer. Could you imagine how if a population of a country doubled? Of course, there will be more demand. 6. Expectation. For example, people believe that investing in property is good for the future. Of course, many people try to purchase property right now. It will increase the demand of property and shift the demand curve of property to the right. Have you got the idea of the demand, right? After this, you need to learn about supply. What is supply? See you in other video.